Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to this presentation. My name is Alexander Stromberg, and I'm going to give you a presentation today about how RSM changed my life, and also how RSM can potentially change your life. Um, the reason why I'm here is I used to be an RBA ambassador as well, like all the helpful students which are around today. Please, if you have any questions, also go up to them. They're super helpful and have a lot of insights for you to share. But I'm also a mentor nowadays by helping current students like with their career choice and interviews and those type of stuff. So for today's presentation, I basically have three goals. First of all, I hope to inspire everyone so that you're gonna walk away from this presentation and think like, wow, my study can actually really help me with my career and what I want to do. Second of all, I'm gonna set some expectations so you can have an understanding of what you can expect of the IBA program and what you will, do, will be doing during your studies here at RSM. And last but not least, I hope to, that you guys are gonna realize what makes the IBA program and specifically for RSM so unique. Um, I normally like to have my presentations quite interactive, but due to the time constraints, we're going to end with the Q&A. So if you have any questions or whatsoever, please write them down, and we're going to come back to those at the end of the presentation. So, how am I going to achieve those three goals? First of all, I'm going to be telling you guys a little bit about myself, why I decided to join IBA at RSM, why I loved it over here, and also how you're going to maximize your student experience. Hello, everyone who's still coming in. So, about me. I'm Alex, 24 year, old, 24 year old, and I am Dutch. I come from the most beautiful city in the Netherlands, that's actually Apeldoorn, and I've heard this all my life. No one really knows where Apeldoorn is unless you are from the Netherlands. So I put it on the map. This is where Apeldoorn is from, uh, where Apeldoorn is, and I loved it. And I lived there from my first to my 18th year, and already when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, have my own company. So actually, last Thursday evening at 11, I had to text my parents and ask them to take the picture of the wall to scan it in for this presentation. They were like, why, why do you even need it? Um, but if they're watching, hi, mom and dad. Um, but from a young age, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, and that's why I decided to join the IBA program. I joined IBA in 2015 and graduated in 2018, and after that, I did my master's in finance in investments over here. Um, so... What did I do after my studies? I started with my best friend, Apollix. And Apollix is my startup. And what we do is data-driven process optimization for organizations. So for example, what we help right now is we work, for example, together with the Erasmus University, but also with the Gemeente Rotterdam and the Bol.com and Van Oort. And we help them save hundreds of thousands and sometimes even millions of euros on a yearly basis. We started just with the two of us in a student bedroom, basically. You see us over there on the left, six square meters, just the two of us, two desks. And currently, we are a team of 12 people and still growing, and we have a lot of open vacancies for the company as well. Um, so yeah, RSM really supported me with achieving those type of things. So, as you might know, I'm quite the entrepreneurial type, but why did I decide to study? So, I love taking risks, however, I am not stupid in that sense. In case my own startup would go wrong, I would love to have a diploma to fall back on. And I basically reverse engineered my, stu my uh, study choice. So, I was thinking, what do I want to become? Well, manage my own agenda, be an entrepreneur, have my own company. So, I decided that a business study would probably be the best study I could pick, which was going to support my dream to become an entrepreneur over there. And I already had my first uh, company when I was 15 years old. I did uh, graphic design. However, when I was getting to the end of my high school, people started to ask me, so Alex, what are you going to do for your study? Are you going to do a graphic design study? Do you want to design? Do you want to build websites? And it actually made me quite nervous because I realized that's not what I wanted to do. The fact what I loved and what I liked doing was having my own company. So when I was 17, I started there for my second business. It was a drone web shop, Robotwinkel. If you ever order something there, thank you, because I had maybe five orders in total, so you'll be very unique. <laughs> Uh, all the money I made with my graphic design, I lost at uh, Robotwinkel, but I'm not going to go into too much details, but it was a very learningful experience for myself. Um, so that also proved to me maybe it's good to have a diploma as a backup plan. Um, so everyone from Apeldoorn, the beautiful city in the Netherlands, basically goes to Groningen. Uh, so I also went to Groningen for a student for a day. I can highly recommend doing that. That's basically where you join this uh, university for one day. You do a couple of lectures, you follow a couple of workshops, and you can really see a little bit about what's happening inside the university. Guess what? I hated it. I hope no one from Groningen is going to see that, and if someone is considering Groningen here, it could be very nice for you, but for me, that wasn't the case, really. Um, I really didn't like it. It had to do with the gut feeling, but also, at the same time, I wanted to study something international. 
And with studying something international, I mean with a lot of people from a lot of different cultures and a lot of different nationalities. And when I came over there, what I basically just saw was like 90% Dutch people and a couple of Germans all speaking English with each other, like Louis van Gaal English, Steenkolen Engels. And I just didn't really see myself fit in there because I really came from that international aspect. Um, so came home, went to, my uni uh, went to my high school again and went to my decan. And a decan is for Dutch high school people, that's someone who can help you with your study choice. And I was there a little bit panicky, like, where, guys, where am I going to go? What am I going to do now? I, I want to study business, but Groningen, I hated it. Why am I even going to go to study? And she opened her big book with the rankings of business studies, and on top was the Rotterdam School of Management. Well, maybe you have it as well, but I was very hesitant in the beginning, because I was like, Rotterdam, Rotterdam, what the fuck? Um, oh. <laughs> I shouldn't be swearing, should I? I was like, Rotterdam, I only know it from Feyenoord, football and hooligans, who wants to study there? But because I didn't really have another option, I still went for a student for a day over there. And when I arrived here in Rotterdam, I absolutely loved it. I followed the lecture there, I was surrounded by so many different people from so many different nationalities and cultures, and I really saw myself sitting there in that chair and actually enjoy my time for the coming four years to study here. Four years because it's a bachelor and a master, and not because I took an extra year for IBA, by the way. So, um, there's so much to talk about what I actually did during IBA, but I broke it down into three little pillars for you guys. First of all, the study association, second of all, the exchange, and third, travels. And it's also a little bit intertwined, but I'm going to limit myself for now to those three pillars. Uh, study associations, there are so many things that are related and linked to the university. There is really something for everyone. That applies both to like more study business oriented things, but also to sports. There's even a lacrosse team or horse riding team linked to the university. So you can really find yourself what you like to do. I did SR in the first year. SR stands for Student Representatives. Uh, basically, what you are is a link between the university students and the university professors. So if there are any problems or questions, you come to the help, you come to the rescue, and you make sure that the problem is being solved. What I also did was Global Beats. I did a board year over there, and Global Beats is basically a uh, like an organization where you organize international student parties. Uh, we used to organize several parties over the whole year for more than 1,500 people at the time. It was not just partying. You also learned a lot about budgeting, spending money, marketing, uh, and all those type of things. So that was actually really helpful. And thirdly, I was also part for a year of BNR Burst Investment Society. And, well, as the name already implies, it's an investment society. So what you really do over here is you come together with a group of students, or you have to find your own group, you all put in some actual real money, and you do presentations and analysis about stocks, which really fits with you know, being a business student. Um, and you have a competition. Also within the Netherlands, every, uh, other universities also have a study association like that, and then the teams with the highest return, they win, and they go to the national competition, and those type of things as well. So just a couple of things I've done uh, linked to the university. But most importantly, I would say, but at least the most fun part for me, and also for a lot of my friends, was the exchange. As you might know, RSM, Rotterdam School of Management, has an incredible reputation worldwide. It also means that the partner network of University of Rotterdam is extremely good. You can go anywhere, like I had friends who went to Hong Kong, to Singapore, to Australia, but also you can go to South America, or North America, or everywhere where you want to go, where we have a partner university, which is basically almost everywhere. I went to the University of South Carolina. That's me, all the way on the left, uh, together with also like a bunch of other exchange students from all over the world standing next to Koki. Koki was the university mascot from uh, the University of South Carolina. The, the national or the, the sports teams were called the Gamecocks, so obviously the mascot had to be a cock. Really, 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 really fun. I look back at this probably one of my most favorite periods of my student time. So if you are going to study here, you can make a decision between an internship or an exchange, or sometimes you can even do both. Go on exchange, you're never going to do it again. I highly recommend it. Um, travels. So international study, uh, international people. Uh, the university also offers a lot of different ways to go abroad internationally. Um, I traveled too much throughout my studies, really, to put it all on one slide, so I'm going to limit myself now to the two travels I did for the university or with the university, basically. Uh, I went to Vietnam and I went to Hong Kong. Quite cool. Um, here on the left, this was first year, actually, guys, this is 2015, you see young me in the front, and on the, the other side you can see me in Hong Kong. Um, wh why I'm mentioning specifically those two trips is they were organized by STAR, and STAR is basically a study association where everyone is a part of, if you're a business student, and they organize study trips. 
And it basically gives you the perfect combination between traveling, having fun, pleasure, meeting new people, but at the same time doing some business-orientated things. So, for example, what we did over there in Vietnam is we went to visit the Dutch embassy. I have to admit, I was really surprised how fancy the Dutch embassy was with a swimming pool, butlers and everything. So, if you're wondering where your tax money goes a little bit, it's probably over there. But regardless, it was really cool. And in Hong Kong, we visited, for example, the Hong Kong Exchange, you know, where they have the bells and everything. I smacked also on the thing, and that was uh, just super cool to do. So also, if you're going to be studying here, guys, really go on those study trips. They're just really fun. And on my Vietnam trip, even, I met my best friend, uh, Joost, who I also started my own company together with. So uh, you can make friends for life. You really can. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I kind of forgot I had this picture in here, to be honest. But uh, I also went to Morocco with some of my closest friends. It was really cool. I rode a camel, and that's all I wanted to say about it. If you guys ever have an opportunity to ride a camel, it's really fun. That's also a life-changing moment for you. I'm already uh, hyping it a little bit up. Um, but like, also, I'm going to explain in a little bit now about why I loved it over here. So first of all, I already briefly touched upon the subject. It is really international. There are a lot of universities, especially within the Netherlands, but also abroad, which love to market themselves as international, but it's mainly just a bunch of local peoples and one or two nationalities, which are also there in huge numbers. Here, in my year, I believe we already had more than 70 different nationalities within my study, and it was just really, really cool to meet so many people from so many different locations. So if you are going to come to study here at RSM, you're going to be in an international crowd, which is really unique and really cool. Ambitious? I mentioned it already a little bit, the rankings of RSM are pretty impressive. Um, so that also attracts like a certain specific uh, type of people. So you will always be surrounded by really ambitious people and also really smart people. And maybe you know, also know that saying, you know, if you are the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Trust me, if you're going to study IBA over here, you're never going to feel like the smartest person because there are definitely at least 100 people who are way more smarter and way more ambitious than you are. And you can learn an awful lot from those people. Thirdly, the reputation, uh, I mentioned it already. It is, I thought, honestly, when I was your age and when I was sitting there, I thought it was a bit of a marketing hoax, you know, like, oh, rankings, who cares about that? Um, but honestly, I've been working now for a couple of years, and I can tell you that it actually means something to have RSM on your CV. If you're going to apply to certain jobs, especially business consulting related things, you will be preferred over a lot of other universities and a lot of other students. And also for me with my own startup, I'm also responsible for the commercial side and acquisition side of things, you really have a good entrance with high level, C level people of organizations because you studied at the same university. So, you know, people from RSM are just going to be successful, I mean, a little bit. Um, last but not least, this one is a bit harder to explain. It's something you really have to feel. We have something within IBA which we like to refer to as the IBA family. Um, probably it has to do with something that we have so many different nationalities, so many people from all over the world coming over here uh, who do not have family, who do not have friends. Um, so everyone needs to be open and welcoming and therefore you make a lot of friends and really strong personal bonds with those people as well. You know, and if you're part of IBA, you are part of the IBA family. It just it's a feeling you will get, but this is probably like the biggest, the biggest reason why I loved IBA specifically. Um, come here. <laughs> and how to get the most out of IBA? Um, I also was thinking like, hey, you guys are just going to be studying um, here, maybe somewhere else, but this is just going to apply to whatever university you're going to go to, and especially if you're going to be studying internationally. There are some mistakes which are easily made when you come to the university like this, and you know you're not going to make the most out of the opportunities you have. So, um, for example, diversify. Not your stock portfolio or your investments. No, I mean diversify with nationalities. So what IBA really offers is so many different people and so many different nationalities. And what I see a lot, so a lot of people do, for example, you know, you come abroad, you don't know anyone here, you don't have any friends, and you're French speaking, right? Maybe you're from France. Uh, and you would just hang out with French people. So when you were at like social events or interactions or parties, you know, you would just stand with the French people speaking French and therefore kind of excluding other people because they couldn't join in the conversation. Like if you come here and you're going to study here, force yourself to speak English. I already knew a lot of Dutch people before I came here, so I didn't want to make any Dutch friends. It's a little bit hard, but force yourself to hang out with different nationalities. And some of my best friends right now, they're from like South Korea, from Norway, Palestine, America, Germany. Um, it's really cool and it's something really unique that IBA has to offer. Maybe not all parents are going to like this point, but 
I think that experience is more valuable than grades, and I've actually been hearing that from a lot more people as well who started their career. Unless you want to work in top, 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 top consultancy, where you guys probably don't want to work, by the way, anyway, um, never, no one's ever gonna ask about your grades. That means not like you should get a 5.5 or a 6 and barely pass, you know, you should maintain some certain good grade, but really try to get some working experience next to it as well. Maybe do an internship, working student, or do a board year, for example. Because experience is way more valuable than everything you'll be learning in those seats. Make a good combination, find a good balance for yourself as well with those type of things. But do not think you just have to come here, stay in the library all day to get those nines or tens. It's not gonna matter that much in the end. What's gonna matter is like how practical you are with those type of things as well. Uh, network and parties, it sounds a bit contradicting, but those two go hand in hand actually. Um, so basically, go out there and be social. Also at parties, you know, like don't see it just as partying, wasting your time, getting drunk or going to parties. Like this is where you meet the most people. This is where you create memories. And this is also where you will be building a strong network with other people. Um, it's a social thing, it really is, but it also teaches you, you know, how to approach random people, how to talk in public, how to approach people you've never spoken to. There's a lot to be learned from those type of things as well. So if you have a party, like, don't skip it. Traveling. I already showed a little bit about uh, how you can, can travel internationally, but also throughout your studies, you know, whether it's after exams or you have some holiday breaks, like make use of this time and go travel, go abroad. I don't think I've ever traveled as much as I've traveled while I was studying over here. There are also so many international people. Go visit them at their home country, go where they are. It's super cool, make use of it. Like every opportunity you have to go travel, just take it because once you start working, you're probably not gonna be traveling as much anymore anyway. And last but not least, it's maybe a little bit contradicting to what I've been saying so far, but pass your exams. Even though it seems to be a lot of fun, everyone's out there partying and being social, secretly, very secretly, at home they're studying, doing their exams, and they will always pass. You do not want to be that person who has to do a reset, or you have to do a course again the next year. So please, for the love of God, pass your exams. So. I hope this presentation gave a little bit of insights how little me, five-year-old Alex, managed to like, get the career that he wanted to get through RSM and how it changed my life. So I also hope that joining RSM is gonna help you achieve your goals and dreams. Because if it worked for me, I believe that it also can work for you guys. Um, so, we're gonna have like a 15, 20 minute Q&A session right now, but before we're gonna get to there, I put my personal email on the slide deck. I'm actually a bit sad that I put my personal email right now because if there are some spammers online on the live stream, you can make use of it, please don't. Um, if you have any questions or maybe you're too shy to ask a question right now, guys, just write me an email. I'm more than happy to help you. I'll get back to you. I can even set up a video call if you'd like to do so. So write me an email with any of your questions and add me on LinkedIn. And if you don't have LinkedIn yet, then the first thing I want you guys to do after this presentation is go outside, sit in the corner, open your phone, download LinkedIn and create an account because it is your online business card, your CV and your network is gonna be super valuable. Um, so create LinkedIn as soon as possible and get started with that stuff. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope this was helpful. We have three people in the room, one over here, one over there, and one over there with microphones. If you have a question, raise your hands and they will get to you and uh, give you the microphone. Uh, what do you think is the difference between uh, business administration and normal economics and business economics? Paul, uh, good question. Um, I've, it's actually something I've been wondering myself sometimes as well. I think with business economics and economics, but uh, I'm not exactly sure about the answer, you will also focus more on like the macroeconomics, you know, geographically and how all these things intertwine and how the economy works in general. And I think with business, it's a little bit more microeconomic focused. So it's also a, a lot more about inside your company. Uh, you learn about accounting, how the business works, and there's like a lesser attention for the macroeconomics part of the world. But you would have maybe to ask one of the ambassadors or somewhere else, because they probably have a better answer than me. Well, yeah, it works, okay. <laughs> uh, in terms of, uh, you were talking about the experience is, uh, is more important than grades. Um, how do you, how, how did you manage your uh, level of stress or pressure 
on you while uh, making the best of your life at the university but still getting good grades? Do you have any like direct tips or is it all just by feel? No, I think, I think that's a very good question. First of all, I was not the best student. <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't was my question. No, I know, I know. Um, I'm personally not very um, influenced by stress, I would say that much. But you really have to find something within your daily life which gives you energy, makes you calm down so you can kind of keep your sanity. Right now with working as well, but also back then with studying, we're working out, really helped a lot for me. So like I'm very active with sports, like I do that like four or five times per week and it just really keeps me sane. Um, I know for some other people also stuff like meditation and those type of things work. Um, yeah, you really just have to make the most out of it and try to have a plan. Right? If everything is kind of gray and you don't know where you're going and what you need to do, you will feel more stressed. If you at least have a plan of how you're going to approach stuff, and it means also partying, but it also means studying for your exams and writing your thesis and all those type of things. If you have a plan, you're going to be way more, cal way more calm about getting through it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Did, did it help? Definitely. Perfect. Come on, guys, don't be shy. I don't buy it. This is your time. Yeah, we've got a question here. Oh, perfect. Hi. Um, so what I wanted to ask is um, these points that you were talking about that the RSM is very diverse. You can travel a bunch and you have a bunch of events. I feel like um, a bunch of different uh, universities here in the Netherlands are saying similar things. For example, the UVA. So why should I choose the Erasmus U University over different universities here? Uh, good question. So, first of all, UVA, I was, I know they had the business study, but I don't really think that is a very good business study, to say so. Um, if you want to stu study international business, at least back in my time, you really had like the Tilburg University, Maastricht, and I think Rotterdam, which were some of the, the better and the top universities to go to. But I'm not familiar with UVA, so I cannot answer that question per se, what really is the difference. But I would just, where I really want to focus on, on this point is that maybe the international aspect and the reputation and the ambitious people you will meet over here. Um, maybe it doesn't mean too much for yourself, but the rankings are really important globally and internationally. So that means also you will be attracting people from all over the world, like the top talent, they really want to come over here and to study. And those people you are more likely to, m to meet and to mingle with here at RSM than you're probably going to meet and mingle with in UVA, UVA. Because let's say you are from, I don't know, the Middle East, and you're going to study abroad, are you going to go for a more unknown and unfamiliar university if you're ambitious, or do you want to go for a university which is like a higher ranking? So I think it really attracts a specific type of people where you can learn so much from. Okay, thank you. Hi. What is currently the balance between international and national students? Um, in my year, I think we had 40% Dutch and the rest was international. Um, you also have like a bunch of Germans and French people, but like the majority is just really from all over the place. As I said, I think in my year there was 70 different nationalities. I wouldn't know the hard numbers, but the majority is not Dutch, actually. But is that still... S the let's say, current the, the situation due to COVID, I can imagine that a lot of foreign students couldn't come over. Um, I mean, I can't have the hard numbers, of course, because I don't have them in front of me, but I think that that's not something you will per se lose. Um, with COVID, of course, you will have a lower number of people, if I recall correctly, from outside of the European Union, but within the EU, you still had uh, international students come here a lot. And I think that, I mean, it's not a hard quote, but they also have some sort of quote that they try to meet, you know, with the kind of type of international people they want to have. Um, that's also something they probably keep in the back of their minds when going through the applications. Uh, I can just add that as an ambassador this year in IBA, we had 75% international uh, and 25% Dutch. And the school accommodates to make sure that we can make sure the international people come here. So everything that's uh, organized in person now with COVID is also organized online for anyone international that can't make it. Thanks. That was helpful. <laughs> yes. Um, did you move uh, to Rotterdam and was it difficult to find a room? Yeah, first of all, my apologies for everyone who wants to move over here. Uh, it's really, really, really hard, I think, to find a room right now, uh, especially to find an affordable room. 
Um, I was fortunate and lucky enough to uh, find a house. Yeah, it's called... What's it called again? Stadswoner, Stadswoner Rotterdam. That's my old roommate, by the way. That's why uh, he, he knew the question. Stadswoner Rotterdam, and that's specifically housing for students as well. Um, you have to sign up for there because you have some sort of ranking as well. The longer you're on the waiting list, the more priority you get with the house. Um, and the houses are actually also affordable there. I think you pay up to 400 euros per month, which is still like decent. Um, but it is quite hard to find a room in Rotterdam, especially around uh, I would say Christmas, that's when most people move in and move out and also around the summer. So if you are gonna start studying here next year, I would really start looking for a room maybe in like April, May already uh, to make sure you can find one because there's a tough competition. Already for me, that's like six, seven years ago, when we would have a room available in my house, we would put it on a Facebook group and I think we would get up to 100 replies from people who try to get into the room. So uh, start rather sooner than later and back in the day, Facebook groups was basically the best way to find rooms. Um, once you're here and settled down, it's a lot of mouth to mouth. You know, you know people, you have friends, you can find a new place. Maybe you have to settle in the beginning for the first half year or first year you live here. But then once you know the people, know the area, then you know also where to find a good house and how to find a house. Oh. <laughs> uh, I have a question about how strict the number of fixes is for this university. university. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm not sure about how strict they are. So from my understanding nowadays, it's a ranking for IBA. So you get the number assigned basically 10 to a couple thousands, how many people apply. And they will allow in the first 700 or so because there is a margin of people who actually don't actually end up starting the studies, even though being selected. Um, and if people reject their offer, it also moves a bit down. Um, so to answer your question, how strict is it? Um, it's think quite tough nowadays to get into IBA. Uh, and it's also, yeah, well, a hard quote, really. Especially as a Dutch person. Maybe some tips on that, actually. Um, if, you really can mo if you really can explain yourself to the recruitment and admissions offers in your motivation, I think that's part of your application as well nowadays still. Um, if you can really explain why you as a Dutch person want to have this international mindset and how you can help like international people integrate over here and how you can learn from them, I think that really can give you an edge over other Dutch people. Because um, the, the majority of people applying to IBA, of course, is Dutch, but we also have quite a limited amount of Dutch people actually entering this program. Um, do you think it is useful to have LinkedIn if you don't really have a lot of experience and you don't really know what to put on it? Yeah, but I, I mean, of course it is. Like, but you, you know what, you know what the, the, the standard mistake is that people make is that they don't think they have something to put on there, right? But everyone has something to put on there. Maybe you helped during a film festival back in your hometown, some voluntary experience. Maybe you were a trainer or a coach for your football team, your hockey team or whatsoever. This also counts as experience, and it's already better than nothing, right? And I think mainly in the beginning, what's the most important part about creating your LinkedIn is making that connection with people. If you have them in your network, you can see where they're up to, where they're gonna go. And if you ever need something from them, or they can help you, or you can help them, you have a direct line of how to approach them with those type of things. So it's not per se about what you can put on there, but it's about more about with whom you can connect as well. Um, and probably the recruitment and admissions officer might also stalk your LinkedIn a little bit. I don't know if that's even allowed, but I don't think they do, but maybe they do. Um, does it help? Come on guys, more questions. Once in a lifetime. Uh, can I ask a question? Um, over here. I was quite interested in how you kick-started the whole entrepreneurial um, adventure after finishing a bachelor. Like, what was it that kind of helped you kick-start this whole entrepreneurial um, endeavor that you went into? Good question. I also did a master. Maybe I skipped over the part, but I studied finance and investments afterwards for one year. Um, how did we kick-start that? Well, actually, the government was our first investor. Um, we left one course open for my master, so we were another student for another year. Uh, so we were still eligible for the study financiering, the student loan. So that meant that we could uh, basically start the company without having to worry to make revenue or profit to be able to maintain ourselves. So then after that year, when that, stu when that student loan, we couldn't get it anymore. That's also where we almost went bankrupt because we had to make some money to pay ourselves. Otherwise, we would be relying a little bit too much on our girlfriends. Um, 
so that, yeah, I mean, that's how we really kick-started it financially. But I, as you can imagine, I already came here kind of with a dream and an idea of what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. So when I was finally done, done getting my diploma, then I could finally do what I came to do here, and that was to start my own company. And I didn't, or we didn't actually want to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to create a new Facebook or a new YouTube. Um, we wanted just to have a practical problem and a practical solution already in the market, and we just wanted to mediate between those two things. So we just really went into the market and asked like IT people, like, hey, what are your problems you have, and where do you think there's potential, and you know, how can you solve those problems? And we made a whole list of problems, and we made a whole list of solutions. Basically, we picked one, and without, and between learning about process mining, that's what we do, between learning about process mining and starting the company was only two weeks. Um, I have a question on uh, the topics. Uh, can you pick two topics that help you uh, entrepreneurship forward the most? You, you mean as in what courses help me yeah. being an, become an entrepreneur? Oh. You were already an entrepreneur. <laughs> Which ones did help you forward the most? Yeah, so for, for me, what really helped, it's not really an answer to your question, but what helped me the most was really like the experience part, right? So, for example, with, with the board here with Global Beats, like, you know, you had to market your own thing, you had to call companies, you had to reserve a venue, you had to take care of the ticket sales, you had to take care of the finances. Like, it was for me most helpful, was more the practical things next to my studies than per se the courses by itself. Uh, but accounting, helped an awful lot because, as you might know, accounting, accountants are hella expensive. Um, so try to like, push it away as long as possible, do it yourself. It's very horrible, it really sucks, but accounting did, uh, was uh, quite impactful. Thank you. Question here? Here, here, closer, closer, closer. Um, you said that the exchange was better than the internship, but why is that better? Uh, exchange is better than an internship? Because um, you can and you will be working the rest of your life. Um, so you're going to spend an awfully lot of time working and doing those type of things, but I don't think you're really going to have the rest of your life to go on exchanges and study at a different university, unless you feel like, there's nothing wrong with that, but unless you feel like when you're 30, 40, 50 years old and you still want to go on exchange, you can but it's more uh, practical to do that during your university right now. Because um, with your internship, you know, as I said, you can also do that over summer, you can have uh, jobs next to your studies and you'll be working the rest of your life. So if you have to pick between the two, I would go for the better opportunity right now and that's an exchange for me. Thank you. Bye. I would like to ask about the yeah, it's working. Uh, about the study combination with the work. How you could manage the two things in one time? To sorry, I didn't hear you. To study and the, to work. Uh, the transition from studying to working. Meanwhile, when you were studying. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, this is very personal and very different from person to person. But honestly, I don't believe that IBA is per se the most difficult study you will ever do in your life. Uh, it is not like econometrics or physics or those type of things. So the opportunity really presents itself to both be successful in studying IBA and at the same time working. Um, but you also have to be really practical and efficient about the way you would be studying, I would say. Um, for me, for example, I realized that going to a lecture I didn't absorb all the information that I would like to absorb. So instead of spending three hours in a lecture, I would often just do it in 15 minutes myself at home. Um, so if you would like be smart and efficient with your time like that, you can really balance the two things. Um, and I can promise you that if you're going to study IBA, you will definitely have time to do something next to it. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you a question here. Here. <laughs> Hi. Uh, do you think it's a uh, very practical study or are you always uh, listening to lectures and just uh, theoretical? Yeah, good question. Um, it's definitely more practical than most other studies out there. Uh, I think what IBA does quite well is to kind of combine the theoretical part and the practical part. Um, in my time, and I think it's still a thing, we had strategic business plan. It's probably still a thing, right guys? Yeah, it is. Um, you would actually have to, for one of your courses, go to a company, do an analysis and write about uh, about their business and their strategy and how they can overcome certain problems. 
I know they just started also something called the I Do program. Um, that's also how you have to do a project for a company themselves where you have to, I don't know, come up with an idea or a solution to a current problem they're having. So I think IBA does balance quite well about what you were learning in your lectures, but also they will force you, because you have to, write assignments and projects on companies. And that happens for quite a lot of courses, actually. So it's not just sitting here and listening and theoretical stuff. And I also think that IBA, even though what they always say is that universities have always a mismatch with what you need in practical and the real day in your real job. But I don't think that gap is too big between IBA and what you're going to do in, uh, in real life with your job. OK, thanks. Um, hi. Hi. Um, when you uh, left high school, was it hard to transition from high school to university? And uh, was the study kind of like what you expected it to be? OK, so that's it's basically a twofold question, right? So first of all, is the study what I expected it to be? And was the transition hard from high school to university? Um, I want to bring it back about what's the transition hard about the IBA family part. Um, I came here by myself as well, out of the 120 people that graduated FAO from my school. Uh, me and only one other person went to Rotterdam. Um, but you were really received with open arms here, I would say. Um, I kicked off my student period over here with the Reke Week, which is the introduction week. And I already immediately made friends the first week. And even better, uh, three of the people who I met in Eureka Week were international, came here without having a house. So I even had three people sleeping on my sofa for the first week when they were here. So if you're going to fill your time and your gaps like that, there's not really a lot of time to think about whether this transition was hard or not. Uh, I loved it. Because in university or in high school, you had to spend all your time in your classes and you were forced to, I know, 8.30 to 3.15 or something. You were forced to attend those classes and you had a specific regime and schedule you had to adhere to. Um, with university, you were way more free to yeah, divide your time the way you want to divide it. So, for example, you could decide not to go to a lecture and then you could like rewatch it later at home, for example. Um, so the transition wasn't hard for me, it was more refreshing in that case. And was the study, I expected it to be what I thought it would be. Um, I didn't do my research or do the diligence really well, so I didn't have that many expectations when I came here. Besides the fact it was a super cool university with a lot of, you know, uh, with a lot of students, uh, I can say one thing to that, it definitely didn't disappoint. Hi, uh, was there something you really didn't like about the program while you were studying here? Exams? <laughs> Uh, what I didn't like, what I did like, yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, I think it's a bit of nonsense, uh, to put it politely, that we have to write a thesis. Um, because, I mean, of course, you go to university, so it should be research orientated. But some people want to get, you know, a VO diploma, university diploma, because that will just help you in life and the, the course and the people are just better. Um, but you would have to write a proper research. So you would have to do surveys, collect data, do testing, and write like a 50, 60, 70 page reports. Uh, some of my friends even had to write 120 plus pages. Uh, that sucked. That really sucked. I really didn't like that. But I think that is something that's just part of uh, wanting to graduate from a university. Um, I'm just a big fan of IBA in general, as you could tell. So they picked the right person for this presentation. Um, I don't really have anything bad to say about it, what I didn't like besides the thesis. Question here in the front. Middle, middle person, go. Thanks. <laughs> um, for a Dutch person, would you recommend uh, an international study or a Dutch study? Oh, yes, I hope that this question would come actually because I didn't put it in my presentation. Um, if you are Dutch and you want to learn from other cultures and you want to be international, I highly recommend IBA. Go do it because you will learn so much and it's just Super cool to see a lot from you know different backgrounds and different cultures and learn a lot from those people. But if you are a Dutch person and you want to come here and you want to be joining a, a studentenvereniging like at core or whatsoever, then do not go to IBA because you will hold a chair available for someone who maybe wants to. Uh, you will hold a chair for someone who maybe wants to be international. Because if as a Dutch person you're gonna like you know go to a studentenvereniging, that will absorb your social life. 
major for the majority. That means you will spend most of your social time, and after your, besides your studies, you will be actually spending time with those Dutch people, so you're not utilizing or maximizing the maximum value you can get out of IBA. So if you are Dutch and you want to live internationally, you want to learn a lot from those people, go study IBA. If you just want to be a Dutch person, do IBA, want to stay and live Dutch, it's a little bit of a selfish decision, I would almost say, to go study IBA, because then you're just not getting the most out of it, even though some other people might want to do that. And I know a lot of people are not going to like that answer, but it's true. Uh, how many hours a week are you busy with the uh, school? <laughs> You shouldn't ask me this, man. <laughs> um, ugh, I would say that th most throughout the trimester, I would spend, I mean, I didn't do my homework, right? So I spent maybe 10 hours per week on my studies, but then towards the exams, the two weeks before, I would spend like 80, to say so. But I would say on average, you are going to be spending 20 or so hours per week on your, on your studying and your lectures. It really isn't like nine to five study time. At least it wasn't for me. It's really about also how you do it yourself. Some people force themselves to be here at 8 in the library and not leave campus before 12, but that's really something you do to yourself and not what's necessary. Uh, hi, do you need uh, any like background in economics to do international business? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. No, you can just go in it blank with zero, uh, with zero economics uh, background. I mean, it might be tough to get into IBA then because they do take into account, I think, whether or not you had an economics uh, subject in high school, at least if you're Dutch. But honestly, there's no minimum requirement, I would say, but um, some people were surprised by how heavy the mathematics was. I would say there's like a 50-50 divide almost between like mathematical, quantitative subjects and qualitative subjects. So if you hate numbers, if you hate accounting and those type of things, then there is going to be quite some maths in it. But it's also not the most advanced type of mathematics. So it's not like econometrics or something. Do you have an idea of what job possibilities this study gives you? Everything. No, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Um, IBA is quite a, but that's, I think that's Bedrijfskunde or international business in general. It's, it's a very broad study. Um, and you will really specialize in your master. So throughout your bachelor, you will learn a little bit of everything. And in your master, you can really decide maybe to do, go towards more accounting or supply chain or marketing or human resources. Um, you will be probably not be able to become an engineer from the studies, but besides that, I have friends who went into like consumer behavior marketing, uh, into like business, into accounting, consulting. Consulting is still one of the top like type of jobs people will go into. But really, you will stay really broad and a generalist throughout your bachelor. So if you're not sure what you want to do afterwards, IBA could be a good starting point. You can discover for yourself both through your studies and through uh, working experience what you like, and then specialize in that later. Right, and do you think that you also have to do an additional study to have a good job, or do you think this is enough? Uh, I think if you don't have a master, you don't really count, to be honest. Um, sorry, guys, if you don't have a master diploma. That's nowadays. Back in the day, it was different. No, um, I think like you really need to get a master diploma after this. So just doing your IBA and just doing a bachelor might not be good enough, at least for the top jobs. I mean, there are plenty of jobs and places you can go also just with your bachelor. But honestly, how you have to see it when people interview or go through CVs and stuff like that. Like, if you have a PAL and you have, let's say, okay, this is going to sound really, really wrong, but let's say you have like um, uh, people with or without a master, then the people without the master will go in the trash can and you will just first start looking at the people with the master before you even start considering looking at the other PAL. And I think it also applies a little bit with HBO and VO difference. I really think so, that uh, VO is going to give you an edge with those type of applications. All right, thank you. Come on, guys, a couple last questions before I go. There, in, the, in yellow. I think uh, that will also be the last question because we have to wrap up for, for the next. No worries. I'll be around for a couple more minutes. Hi. So uh, still talking about job opportunities, 
I think that when you're an analyst or a consultant, you don't use your creativity that much. But would you say that you have some job opportunities that make you use your creative side? I mean, so work consultancy really is about is, is coming up with a uh, solution for a problem. Like you advise companies. So if there's a problem, you have to be very creative actually to overcome those type of problems. So I definitely think there's plenty of opportunity to be creative about those type of things. But if you really mean creative as in like, I don't know, maybe marketing, designing, or come up with good ideas. Yeah, I mean, a bunch of people decided to do like marketing management after that as well and do something into the marketing department, you know? So that's where you actually really, really use your creative side. And for me, for example, with Global Beach, the board here with the parties, you had to come up also with creative ideas to sell tickets and to get attention. Um, it's also like how you orientate yourself a bit next to your study. Um, but there's definitely a million different ways to be creative, whether it's from projects you have to write at a company or whether you have to do presentations for your peers. Like if you come up with a creative idea to get your message across, like you have the stage is yours to come up with your own idea. Thanks for that. Well guys, thank you so much. Enjoy the open day and I'll be around for a couple more minutes.